What's up everybody, it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and today I'm going to show you how you can take uh, your green screen footage if you're using images as planes and how you can have this footage jump and interact with different things in your scene. Alright, so I'm here in Blender in a brand new scene. I'm going to hit A and X and then delete everything. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to hit Shift A, Mesh, and I'm going to add in a circle. And I'm just going to leave it at, uh, I think it's 32 vertices here for this tutorial, but if you want to make it a little smoother, you can bump that up to 64. So in the video demonstrating this technique, I did a little bit fancier modeling, I guess you could call it, <laughs> for uh, the, the circles or the spinners, whatever he's on. Uh, but for this tutorial, I'm not going to do all the modeling. I'm just going to get to the actual concept and how to achieve this effect. So I'm going to hit tab and go into edit mode and just hit F just to fill this circle. And then I'm going to quick hit E and Z and just extrude up on the Z, just like that. I'm gonna right click and shade it smooth. And our next step is to get this spinning. So there's a couple ways you can do this, uh, but the easiest way is to hit Shift A, Curve, and we're gonna add in a circle right here. So I'm just gonna scale it up to something like this. And I wanna select this little circle here and just hit Control A and apply all the transforms. So I'm going to select my circle, and I'm going to go down here to my Constraints tab. Sorry, this one right down here. And I'm going to left click right here, and I'm going to select Follow Path. Now I want the target to be the Bezier circle. So now you can see that my little circle is on the Bezier circle, but if I hit play, nothing happens. So what we need to do is we need to hit Animate Path. So I'm going to hit Animate Path, and now if I hit play, you can see that the circle is spinning around the curve. And for this tutorial, um, I have it only going to 250 frames, which should be good, um, but if we need to make it longer, we can get to that down the road. But if you did need to make it longer right now, right off the bat, you could always just set your start and end frames to where they need to be, and then click Animate Path, and that should help make that a little bit longer for you. So now we can go ahead and bring in our footage. So I'm going to hit Shift A and go to Image and then Images as Planes. And if you don't have this add-on enabled, you can go up to Edit, Preferences, and just search for Images up here. And then you can select the Images as Planes. Make sure that box is checked. And then when you hit Shift A, go to Image, Images as Planes. You can navigate in your computer to wherever you have your footage saved, and we're going to bring that in. <clears throat> so right here I have my footage, so I'm just going to select that and hit Import Images as Planes. And there's nothing there, so in order for me to see this, I can either go to my look dev mode right here, which is really small right now, or I can just go back to my solid view and then hit this drop down arrow and select texture, and that will allow me to see it. So I'm going to need to scale this up. I also need to orient this in the right way, so I'll hit R, X, and 90, and then R, Z, and 90, and now I'm facing the right way. Now you can see that I need to, oops. Oops, so I guess I need to hit R, Z, and 90 one more time uh, just to get that facing the right direction there. So I'm going to hit G and Z and bring this up. And you can see that there is uh, there's some errors here. When I was keying out the footage, I missed some areas. So in order to fix this, you can just hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, Control R, like this, and just delete these areas that you don't need by adding in edge loops like this, and then 3 for Face Select Mode, you can delete these faces, X, and I'll just delete the faces. And I think I can clean up this area as well. Now I can scrub through my footage real quick just to make sure that I didn't cut off any parts. Because, <laughs> for example, yeah, so right there I'm good. Um, but, for example, say I was to add a loop cut here. Well, obviously he's cut off there, but as you can see... So you just want to make sure that you leave enough room that your footage doesn't get cut off if you're going to be cutting your footage like that. So I'm going to hit Control A and apply all transforms so that the origin point snaps down here to the cursor, just so when I scale, I'll be scaling from the origin point. We can maybe scale him down a bit. So in order for me to get my footage to stick to this, uh, this little spinner or this circle, um, there's a few ways you can do this, but I think to achieve this effect, the best way is going to just first to be 7 to go into top mode, G, and we're just going to move our footage to the spinner. 
So, but we should probably go to frame one first, so. So now I've got my footage right here on the spinner. And in order for me to get this footage to stick to the spinner, I'm gonna select my footage. I'm gonna go to my constraints right here. And I am going to add a child of constraint. And for the target, I'm gonna select the circle. So now when I hit play, you can see that my footage is stuck to the circle, which is just what I want. So let me go to the part where he jumps. So right here, looks like right around frame 186 is where my footage is uh, starting to, <laughs> to take off there. So I just wanted to make note of that, um, but real quick what we're going to do is we're going to add in another circle, something for me to jump onto. Alright, so I'm going to go back here to frame one, and I'm going to select this circle, and holding down shift, I'll also select this the Bezier circle, seven for top mode. I'm going to hit shift D, and I'm going to duplicate everything, and I'm just going to put this, move this over something like that, and then I'm going to hit G. And then I'm going to select this circle up here and just hit G to move it back to the, to line it up with the circle. It's like going crazy there. Something like that should be all right. It doesn't have to really be perfect. So now if I hit play, you can see that they're moving, but they're moving at the exact same uh, like speed and we don't really want that. So what I can do is I can just grab this other circle here and I can just move it to a different spot. So now when I hit play, I'm getting a bit of variation. Um, you can see that this circle, just from moving it in here, they're passing each other at different times, but we're going to need this circle to be in front because when he makes the jump right here, I want him to be landing on the circle, so this needs to come in front. So by hitting 7 to go into top mode, I will select the circle here and just hit G and move this whole thing just over like that. And if I hit play, so in order for me to get this footage to go from this circle here to this circle, I need to do a little bit of keyframe animation. And what I mean by that is not just keyframing this actual footage here to go from here to here, but I also need to keyframe this influence on the child of constraint. Because remember, we added a child of constraint to our images planes here. So let's go right here to frame 183. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and make sure you're on your child of constraints so you can select your footage, go to your constraints tab, and under influence I'm going to hit I and that will add a keyframe. So you can see we've had a keyframe right here. So let me just adjust this to see a bit better. And before I even worry about animating him going from here to here, I'm going to hit play. And it looks like right here at 187 I want that influence to be zero. Now you can see that it's going to snap him back over here and we don't want that. So I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. So while we're on frame 183 we'll, with our footage selected, we're also going to hit I and we're going to put a keyframe for location, rotation and scale also. Next, I'm going to move over just one keyframe and I'm going to take the influence down to zero and I'm going to hit I to insert a keyframe and hitting 7 to go back in the top mode. I'm going to bring my footage right back to the original spot of where it was. I'm going to hit I and insert a location, rotation, scale keyframe. So now when I hit play, the influence of the child of constraint is now off down to zero. So now I can take this footage and I'm going to go back. This can be a little tricky. I'm going to go back to 184. So now if I scroll forward like this where he's jumping in the air, I'm going to go 7 for top mode and I'm going to hit G and bring my footage right over here. And then I'm going to hit I and insert a location, rotation, and scale keyframe. So if we play this back, 
it'll look something like this. So we just have to time this landing. Now this can be a little tedious. So right here is my keyframe where it's about to land. We want the landing to hit hard because it's when he's when he's dropping. So if I go to frame 197 maybe, or we'll just have to go with 196. I'm gonna hit G and Z and bring them down like this. And it's okay if it goes in a little bit. I'm gonna hit I, location, rotation, scale, because it should, it should land fine. Um, what we need to do is we're gonna to need to add another constraint here to our images planes. Now this can be extremely tricky, <laughs> but just try and follow along here. So I'm gonna hit add object constraint, child of. So what I need to do now is I need to have my influence for this child of down to zero. And I'm gonna go right back here to frame 195, right before he lands, and I'm gonna hit I and that will insert a keyframe for the influence of the child of constraint. So when I go to frame 196, I want to crank that influence all the way up and hit I to insert a keyframe. Now we are going to have to select our target, which will be circle 2. So let's see if this worked correctly. So I'm going to hit play. Oop, let's see, and is he following? Yes, he's following. So it worked correctly, but you can see that the animation, or I'm sorry, the keyframe of the location is a bit off. So I'm going to have to fine tune that a bit. So if I go back to frame 185 or 186, I'm going to scroll out here a bit and hit play. So right here, frame 200. Or maybe it's, yep, it's back. So we'll go right here at frame, let's try frame 200. G and Z, move that up, hit I, location, rotation, and scale, and let's just see if that fixed that. So that's not too bad. And what I did in the animation, because it was really hard <laughs> getting the feet to line up while doing all this other <laughs> stuff, so I just put emissive surfaces on here. So if I go to my shading tab and I just turn on bloom, and say, I didn't make the whole thing emissive, but for this tutorial, if I quick add a new emissive texture here, and then you just turn the strength up a bit, and maybe we'll make it like a blue, I think I had in the video, something like that, purple. When he lands, it's it's much harder to to tell where the feet are, and it, ju it just helped in the situation. Now just keep in mind that this is a very rough animation um, in the, the one that I did for the, the this video right here for this video I spent a lot more time actually fine-tuning some of the the jumps and stuff like right here you know he wouldn't actually just jump straight across like this Let me just like he wouldn't just jump straight from this circle over to that there'd be a little maybe a little bit more going up in the air um, so you, you, you can really fine-tune um, those keyframes in the graph editor but the principle of this is essentially we're added, we've added two constraints to our green screen footage and we're turning off the first constraint right here, we're turning off this first constraint when his feet start to leave the circle and then we're also keyframing where he is, his location, rotation and scale so that it doesn't get confused and just send him wild off into outer space like we saw earlier and then the second thing that we're doing is when he lands we are animating the second child of constraint so that he sticks to this circle. So guys, I hope that this video was helpful. If you found it helpful, please subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment and a like and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.